had never ridden in a limousine before. It was pretty exciting. Is this your first limo ride? Ugh, no, for the fifth time. Oh, sorry. I'm just excited. This kid better be worth it. I looked up at the rearview mirror to see Liu Biaxian staring at us. He's probably thinking the same thing. I was playing with my toys. When I heard the car pulling up. Lou is home. I stared out the window to see Lou and Mr. Quilp coming in with some new guy. I couldn't wait to mess with them. <laughs> I was born in Detroit, Michigan around 1912. I grew up a healthy child, which stopped when I reached the age of 11. <coughs> but lucky for me, I had my sister, Tabitha, to take care of me. Tabitha would collect flowers for me. Here you go. They're wonderful. She would sing me songs. Ring around the rosy, pockets full of posy. She would tell me stories. And then she ran from the wolf. One of the greatest things she did for me was when she gave me my bear. She had saved her allowance to get it. It's wonderful, Tabitha. I love it. <laughs> 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 Are you all right? I nodded. I'm fine. I think I just need some rest. Tabitha looked at me with concern. Are you sure? I nodded again. Of course. I will see you in the morning. I love you. Tabitha smiled at me. I love you too. Tabitha left the room, and I rolled over to go to sleep. I was right about seeing my sister in the morning. Just not the way I was thinking. I woke up, standing, in a graveyard. At first, I was excited to be out of bed. I was so used to being confined to my room. Huh? I looked behind me to find my family surrounding a grave. What's going on? I saw a coffin being lowered into the ground. What's going on? I made my way through the crowd. Whose funeral? I looked across the way to see Tabitha crying. I waved to get her attention. Tabitha, what? I saw something that stopped the words in my throat. I saw her holding the teddy bear that she got for me. I remember going to sleep with it. If she has my bear... Later that night, I watched Tabitha lying in my bed and holding my teddy bear, crying. <laughs> and I felt terrible that I couldn't interact with her. I couldn't hold her. I wish I could take away your pain, dear sister. To my surprise, Tabitha's head shot up and looked around. Theodora? Days passed. My sister learned to live without me. <laughs> <laughs> Which made me happy. And sad. In the meantime, I was learning to be a ghost. Passing through walls was easy enough. But interacting with objects was difficult. After manipulating and dropping several objects, eventually, I learned to manipulate the objects. <laughs> Much to the horror of the help. <coughs> Since I could manipulate objects, I soon learned to occupy them. I would enter toys, mostly. I would enter my sister's stalls and move around inside them. It felt pretty because they were made so well, but they felt too stiff for me to move around. I discovered a different problem with them. One day, Tabitha and her friends were running through the house. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to join them, without them noticing, of course, but when I got to the door, oof, it felt like I hit an invisible wall. Huh? For some reason, I couldn't leave when I was in an object. I tried exiting the doll, and tried flying out the door, but I ran into the invisible wall again. I floated around the halls, thinking about why I couldn't leave. I was able to attend my own funeral, but I could not leave our house for some reason. Then it came to me. I sneaked into Tabitha's room to find the teddy bear. I entered it. I sneaked through the house, just to make sure I didn't scare anyone. 
I stared at the door for moments, feeling nervous. I stepped through the door and found I could leave. I was happy to be outside. <laughs> it was nice to feel the cool air on me, or at least pretend I could. The years passed. I was with her when she found love. At least, she thought so. She had taken me on a constitutional in the city. She was about to walk in the door when she crashed into Paul. Oof! Oh, oh my, excuse me. <laughs> no, madam, the fault is mine. The two got to know each other over the next few days. I started to get suspicious of Paul during a talk at the cafe. The two conversed as Paul would eye me suspiciously. <laughs> Tabitha looked at Paul curiously. What's so funny? Paul pointed at me. That teddy bear. It's so dusty. Tabitha glared at him. This is all I have left of my sister. Paul was taken aback. Oh, I'm sorry. Paul smirked. It's a beautiful bear. Paul sipped his coffee while still glaring at me. I knew he had plans for my sister and her bear. Time passed, as it always does, and much to my chagrin, they were wed. It wasn't long before the marital bliss would end. They would fight most nights. Have you been drinking again? Get off my back, woman. It's the only solace I have. I would respect your drinking if you bought it with your own money. I made sure to keep my eyes on Paul. Then the night came. Tabitha and Paul were sleeping. <coughs> At least Tabitha was sleeping as Paul slipped out of bed. I decided to follow him. Paul made his way through the town. He kept looking back. Huh? Probably because he felt someone was following him. <laughs> I followed Paul into a local tavern. Paul sat with two shady characters. I managed to sneak under the table to listen in on their conversation. You got your telegram. When do you want us to take her out? I was disgusted by what I heard. Paul put a finger to his lips as a sign to silence his friends. As much as I didn't want to, I continued to listen. Don't announce it to the world. Sorry. We just like being up front. Anyway, can you do it tomorrow night? Sure, as long as the pay is guaranteed. I had to get back home to protect my sister. The next day came. Paul had come up with some cockamamie story. I found an opportunity, my love. <sighs> Did you hear something? Tabitha and I saw Paul off to his opportunity. Tabitha waved to him. Safe travels, my love. Tabitha had no idea what was coming for her. But I did. And I was prepared. Night came. I watched as Paul's hired goons sneak towards the house. Shh! You'll wake the whole town, idiot! Sorry. Paul certainly didn't get his money's worth. I heard the goons pick a lock at the back door. The goons made their way through the house. I made sure to follow them. The two goons sneaked down the hallway, stopping to talk to each other. All right, let's split up. I'll mess up the west end of the house, you mess up the east end. Right. The two of them went in separate directions. This was going to be too easy. I decided to follow the first goon to the west end of the house. I had learned a few tricks and planned on using them on this unfortunate soul. I jumped into a painting of my late Aunt Gertrude. As the goon passed the painting, he looked at it. Huh? To see Aunt Gertrude, me, glowering at him. The goon glowered back. What are you looking at? This was my opportunity. An intruder. The goon looked at Aunt Gertrude. Me, in shock and terror. 
What? I stretched out of the painting, changing Aunt Gertrude's visage to have razor-sharp teeth and claws as I reached for the goo. <coughs> he fell to the ground, closed his eyes, and whimpered like a baby. After a few moments, the goon opened his eyes to see that the painting of Aunt Gertrude was normal again. He shook his head before running off. That was one down. Time for the other. The other goon ran towards the other end of the house. What's going on? I went into the room where my sister kept her old doll collection. I never liked them. They creeped me out in life, but I thought they were perfect for what needed to be done this night. As the other goon looked for his friend, Buddy, where are you? He found me instead. I'm here. Huh? The goon turned to face me. Well, the face of the doll I inhabited. I waved to him with my little doll hand. Hello. <laughs> the goon kicked me. Sending my doll form flying into a wall. The goon stared at me in horror as he tried to compose himself. The goon came closer to investigate the doll. When I felt he was close enough, I called reinforcements. With my ability to move objects, I had the other dolls attack. <coughs> the dolls jumped and clung to the goon, who struggled to throw them off. <coughs> The other goon ran out the door like his friend. Ah! Tabitha eventually came downstairs to investigate. What's going on? My sister was always a deep sleeper. Paul had returned from his business trip. Tabitha was excited to see him. Paul! I knew Paul didn't feel the same. Tabitha! I watched Paul as he came up with a new plan. What do I do? What do I do? He would glare at the teddy bear. Me. What are you looking at? A loser. I followed him. To my horror, he took a knife out of the knife holder. If you want a job done, you have to do it yourself. Paul stomped down the hallway towards my sister's room. I chased after him. My sister was getting dressed. <laughs> when Paul came in and readied the knife, I had to stop him. Stop! He turned to look at me huh? as I charged him in my teddy bear body. What the? I jumped on his face. <coughs> and fought with him. We tumbled down the stairs. Paul landed on top of me at the bottom of the stairs. He stared down at me with fury, raising the knife over his head. I've always hated you, bear! He plunged the knife into my teddy bear form. And to my horror, the stab hurt me. It was terrible to find out that anything that happened to the bear could hurt me. If he destroyed the bear, he raised the knife over his head again. I should have destroyed you when I had the chance. I was ready to be destroyed. Until... <coughs> Tabitha cracked him over the head with a frying pan. <sighs> Paul picked himself up groggily and tried to give my sister his most pathetic look. My dearest? Tabitha sneered at her soon-to-be-ex-husband. Don't, my dearest me. She crashed the pan against his head again, knocking him unconscious. Tabitha looked towards me. Theodora? I waved meekly to her. Hello. Paul was taken to prison. I swear, the bear is alive. Sure it is, buddy. Sure it is. The years flew by, and Tabitha met a new man. A much better man. <laughs> And she had a few kids. <laughs> <laughs> the years passed. The children grew up and left the home. Bye, Mom. Love you. While Tabitha and her husband Stephen grew older, Stephen eventually passed away. When it came time for Tabitha, I was at her side. Tabitha was 70 at the time, I think. I sat at her bedside as she did with me when I was alive. Theodora? I'm here. She smiled. It's nice to hear you. I had kept pretty quiet over the years. I didn't want to put my sister's family on edge. Is there anything I can do? Just stay with me. So I did. I stayed with my sister for hours. 
We talked and reminisced until... See a light. Do you see it, Theodora? Yes. It's beautiful. I lied. I didn't see a light. But I'm sure I knew what was happening. You should go towards it. I love you. Theodora. I love you too. I watched my sister pass. There was a look of serene and calm on her face. I, in my teddy bear form, laid next to her. More time passed, and the house fell into disarray. I wandered through the halls in my teddy bear body. I thought that I would cross over after my sister passed, but I was still here. I was without purpose, until one day, Hello? I heard someone in the house. Huh. I made my way to where I heard the voice. I found an old man wandering around. He looked down at me with a smile. Hello, little bear. I was surprised that he wasn't afraid of me, considering I was a walking teddy bear. He knelt down so that he was eye level with me as much as he could. I was quite a small teddy bear. Are you the security here? I nodded the teddy bear's head. The old man smiled. How would you like a job? 